series. Today we are going to look at just one car, the 2022 Kia Stinger. So here's what we do here. We go really, really, really in depth. Now I'm about to make another video of showing just the differences, which will be a shorter clip. And you may have watched that first and been referred to this video afterwards if you're not watching live with us. Just so you know, this is a live video. We're gonna take a lot of interactive comment and we are gonna go really, really, really in depth here. So normally what we do is we spend a half an hour going through cars. Uh, we'll, do, we'll go through the front, the back, the trunk, everything. We'll show you everything in the car, the technology, uh, but we'll also take your questions. And in this case, because it's the very first time we're introducing a brand new vehicle, you may have more questions and we may stay on longer. So if this video seems like it's intimidatingly long, uh, don't worry, we're going to cover most of it in the next 30 minutes. So if you haven't got 30 minutes, do, my, do me a favor. And uh, what you can do is uh, you can, um, yeah, grab yourself a beverage, grab yourself a snack, and we will take care of you. So here we go. All right, we're going to flip around here. What I'm going to do is show you how to join us live if you want to. We're going to change the name of our channel probably tonight. So uh, be with, bear with us for a second here. We are just uh, refreshing the page here. And if you refresh our page exactly at two o'clock Eastern time, you're gonna see a live video show up right here. Once we do that, we're gonna click on there. And when we do that, we can get into our video. We're gonna watch a Colgate ad for a second. And what I'm gonna do is just uh, take care of this. And da -da -da -da. I don't think I did what I needed to do. All right. Bear with me, I'm just well, watching the ad for a second as I'm getting rid of a someone that I don't want on this channel anymore. There we go. There we go, we're gonna skip the ad. There we go, sorry about that guys. If you guys see a um, troll on there, sometimes that happens in our live videos, just ignore them. I can see them a lot easier if everybody ignores it. Um, if you guys all tell me about it, it's very hard for me to find them. So uh, there we go. All right, we've got rid of our troll, there we go. So what are we doing today? First of all, let's talk news. Uh, Kia in Canada, which is where we're filming right now, the Kia K5 and the Kia Telluride were both runners up for overall Canadian car and overall Canadian uh, utility vehicle of the year. They did not win, saves me from making a video today. The Kia EV6 was introduced uh, worldwide markets today. I was gonna do a video on that today, but a lot of interest in the Stinger and some other things going on. So we'll do an EV6 video tomorrow. Uh, which is very interesting to me. I'm a big EV fan. Obviously, you know, we're a big EV dealer here, uh, but today we're going to go all stinger all the time. So like I said, we're going to make this video uh, live and I will make another video, which will kind of be an introduction to this video, a little shorter, easier to watch, uh, just uh, the basics. So um, we'll make that. We'll put it up hopefully today before I go home and uh, we'll do that. So we didn't say to everybody, we usually skip to the three minute mark. We're at the three minute mark. Here we go live with our content. Do me one little favor, guys. Uh, if you haven't hit the like button yet, we're going to try to get to 70 likes on this video. So uh, we've got 38 people on. If you all hit the like button right now, there's going to be 300, 400 people on this video easily. And uh, here we go. All right, so Kia Stinger, quick little history here. Uh, when the Kia Stinger first came out, I made some videos on it. Kia USA saw me, uh, got to go to LA to do a video shoot for Kia Motors America of the uh, Kia Stinger. I have been a fan of this uh, vehicle for a long time. I was about to take off my jacket before I started. See the Stinger jacket here? Because uh, it's warm in here. Uh, but I decided to keep it on for now because uh, I've taken this car to the racetrack twice. I've gone with uh, two different professional drivers on two different tracks. I've driven it myself around the track. Um, now, of course, that was a previous generation, but I kind of know this car pretty well. We've gone really in depth. I've spent a lot of time with this car. Uh, I've been given the blessing and the opportunity to uh, have spent time with this car with uh, the manufacturer of Kia Motors USA. Kia Canada has been great to me as well. The Kia, the Kia Stinger has won Canadian Car of the Year in the past. And this is the updated version. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at what's new. We're gonna go through in and out, uh, focus on not only what's new, but also what you see here. Uh, and like I said, this is really in-depth and it's supposed to be in-depth. If you don't want the in-depth thing, there's plenty of videos that have test drive. The one thing I will not be able to show you accurately is the new exhaust sound. I did drive some car this morning, uh, drive this car this morning. I can tell you the exhaust sounds great. We'll do a separate video where we try to get the exhaust sound. Uh, just on these live videos, I'm not gonna be able to film it worth um, worth viewing where it sounds really good. So we'll get a proper microphone set up and do that on a separate video later. Uh, it is better, it is louder, um, but if you want the car to be quiet, it can be quiet. So that's something that's kind of cool. It's, it's got the baffles that can open up. I could show you a picture, but I don't have that on the live video with the ability to do that right now. Uh, so really good exhaust notes, um, that's the big thing. All right, let's talk about a couple little things that are different. Um, you know what, let's just drive right in. There are two things I do not like about this car. So just two things. 
Uh, the very first thing is not going to matter to most of you. Check out the new key fob. There's the new logo on the new key fob. The only thing that I'm a little disappointed in is the previous key fob for the previous Stinger had a round top up here. It was unique and it had a leather-like feel to it. This is, let me just go into the light a little bit more. This is a, a plastic feel. In fact, it's identical to our other keys, other than it's the very first car we've seen with the new logo. Um, it just loses a little bit of specialness here to see that um, uh, key here. Now, no big deal to me. It's got all the buttons you need in the right places, including that remote start, which we can talk about a little bit later as well. So there's that. And bear with me for a second. I just got someone here to take care of as well. And where is it? Okay. Bum, bum, bum. There we go. Had to get rid of a second person there. Sorry about that, guys. All right. So one thing I don't like as well back here is the badging. Now, in the United States, I believe it says Stinger right here. Now, I love the new Kia logo. Here's my issue, and I'm going to try to catch it on film for you. Do you see the sort of lines in that? It's sort of that brushed aluminum look. You can see the horizontal lines in there. So you got horizontal lines in there. You've got chrome look over here. So that's a different look to the logo. You've got dark chrome on the whole car, which means that this chrome logo doesn't match. And you've got a black outline, chrome-ish looking logo that doesn't match anything. And this is sort of a brushed aluminum look without the actual vertical line brushed look there. This badges just do not match. So what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna take the logos we're gonna plasti dip them, make them all black, and in my mind, that would look way better than all that. So that's the only thing I think they got wrong is they, um, the stinger or the badges just don't match. And I don't think most people are gonna notice from a distance, but again, I'm a detail person. We said we're gonna go through detail, and that's what we're gonna do. All right, so uh, let me just take a look inside the car. Let me get the key in my pocket. Perfect, it is in my pocket. Hopping inside the car, the other thing I think is a little different these, I don't remember being quite so angled down before. We had a 360 camera before, but now these cameras are capable of also adjusting their software to look at your blind spot. We're gonna show you that in a second here. Um, when we do that, we'll uh, show you that, but that's, I think, why there's a redesign there. Another little thing that's uh, interesting, the Kia logo. I don't know if you can see the Kia logo on the glass there, right there. Old Kia logo on the side glass. The new Kia logo is on the front and rear glass. So the front and rear glass are obviously different. There's the new Kia logo on the front glass, new Kia logo on the rear glass as well. And that just tells me, if I can show it to you here, there we go. That just shows me, it focuses, that the rear glass is probably different just because of the light up there. And the front glass is probably different because the lane keep, lane follow, junction avoidance assist, those kinds of things are updated. All right, hopping inside. Still have the power operated wheel, that rises, lowers, comes in and out. Uh, you still have probably the best seats in the industry or among the best seats in this industry. Eh, I can't say that because there's a lot of cars worth three times the price that have nicer seats. Uh, but you have some nice things here. So this is the suede package, the GT suede. I'll show you the price point actually in a second. Uh, what you've got here is one of my favorite pieces of some of our seats. This extends the front out here and you can see how that lengthens the seat. So whether you are tall or short, this just curls out and it really makes a difference for um, comfort for someone like me, longer legs, shorter legs, whatever you want. Uh, it brings it right out where you want. And then, you, of course, you also have the ability to have four-way lumbar up, down, in and out. And right here, this button like that, what it does is it squeezes your side bolsters in or out. Now, if you want it to do it on its own, all you have to do is uh, put it in sport mode and the side bolsters will squeeze together. So that's pretty cool. It's already done that in the past. I don't think in the very first year of the Stinger did that. But uh, 2019, or yeah, 2019 models, no, 2020 models and beyond have done that. 2019, bear with me. The very first year Stinger did not seem to do that. All right, let's take a look inside here now. This is the Suede GT Elite package. Uh, and there are, ooh, let's just try to zoom out here. You can see as soon as I shut the door, I don't know if you saw that there, the steering wheel came down to greet me. So when I open the door, let's see if I can show it here. Let me just flip the camera around this way. It'll be easier to show you. Uh, oops, there we go. Flip it up this way, so I'm gonna open the door, watch the steering wheel, try to hold the camera steady. See how it kind of rose up a little bit? We'll shut the door again. And the steering wheel comes down. So kind of a, just a cool little greeting thing. I don't believe the previous generation did that. Um, if it did, I never uh, paid much attention to that. So um, there we go. Let's flip the uh, 
Now, we're turning the, ooh, that's not the right view, there we go. Turn the vehicle to the on position. So again, those of you just joining us for the very first time, we are indoors. We're not gonna turn the car to on. We're just gonna, or not gonna start the car, but we will turn it to on. I'm gonna also kill the vents here. So this new suede interior package looks fantastic. Now it's interesting, when we first introduced this vehicle, a lot of people online said, oh, I don't like the suede, I don't like the suede, I don't like the suede. Uh, it looks fantastic. I don't think it's gonna wear much. Uh, what it does do really nicely is it grips you in the seat. And that's why they do it. On a true sports car, we had the Porsche GT4 here, uh, Porsche, excuse me, GT4 here, uh, a while ago in the summer, and it had the same type of interior. It just grips you in the seat. So leather side bolsters, leather headrests, leather around the back here, up top. But you've got, uh, let me just flip this camera around here. You can see that there is suede everywhere else and red stitching. It looks great with this package, and this uh, suede package is, I think, about $300 or something like that. How would you clean it? You just vacuum it out. It's not that hard to clean. Um, I'm not someone who drinks coffee in my car. I don't spill coffee in there, so that's probably an advantage for me. Uh, but it looks really nice. It is really good. Um, definitely a high-end feel. You've got the red stitching up top here. You've got the red stitching on the suede here, and it's just a nice feel. You've got the similar type of suede on the roof liner there, and, of course, the nice oversized sunroof as well. Uh, almost like a panoramic roof without the rear panels. So very, very nice there. Uh, what's interesting to me is they stuck with the same interior lights. Instead of going with something like the Seltos or the um, Sorento, you still have the lights here. The Seltos and Sorento have little touch lights. You can turn this on by hitting the button, uh, but you can't uh, do it by just touching them, which is interesting. Frameless mirror is new. You can see, hey, there we are. How are you? Uh, so frameless mirror is new. You've got your three buttons down there for your garage door opener. One thing that's interesting is the Uvo Intelligence button. We always used to have those on the mirror. Now they're on the ceiling here. Couple things, you do not have a navigation button. You used to always have three buttons here and you don't have the navigation button anymore, which is fine. You never need it, you never use it. This car's got all kinds of navigation through Android Auto, Apple CarPlay and factory navigation. Uh, so just interesting there. And I believe you used to have your sunglasses holder here in the past. You're now gonna put it in a tray in the armrest, which I can show you in a little bit. Uh, I think there's some technology up here and that's why they've gotten rid of that. So a little bit different design there. I don't think anybody's gonna notice or care. And uh, we'll come across to the steering wheel now. Taking a look in the dash here, what looks the same is actually different, if that makes any sense at all. Uh, if you uh, zoom in here, I left it on these uh, gauges here. So we used to have some of this information in the past. Uh, there's your temperature gauge, your Newton meters of torque. Now I haven't checked yet if you can change that. You probably can. Maybe you can't, I don't know. And also your turbo pressure. So uh, you can have those little gauges in there. You can change a lot of things in this car, of course. Um, and uh, be better without the badges in the rear. Oh, we're talking about that, okay, yep. Uh, so yeah, so you can see that's uh, sort of a newer uh, setting there. You have lane follow assist there. Um, sorry, lane keep assist there. Lane follow assist, I just turned on and off. Lane follow assist, if we, we might be too zoomed in for this. Yeah, this button right here, turns your lane follow assist on and off. So let's just try to zoom back out. Uh, so you can see that's on your steering wheel. You can just touch it with your thumb, quite easy to do. Uh, so basically the same things over here. Now over here you have a new button that you can customize to do all kinds of things. And we'll show you some of the things you can customize that when we dig into the menus, which is coming up very soon. Overall, uh, similar feel. Like you definitely know you're in a Stinger. There's really, really not a lot of change in this car. Uh, I don't believe that the previous generation had the perforated gear shift as well. I know for a fact it doesn't. Uh, so it was a smooth... Oh, Siri's talking to me here. Uh, so you have a smooth gear shift uh, down here. Or in the previous model, now you have the uh, perforated gear shift. But other than that, basically the exact same in here. Uh, parking button, parking... Or uh, rear view camera button right there. We will show you the rear view camera button. Uh, what's cool about this is... This big 10 and a quarter inch screen... Uh, is much better. So the bezels are nice and small. Uh, you used to have just an eight inch screen here. Let's be very honest, it became out of date for the car. Uh, now you've got a proper backup uh, camera size over here. And then that 360 view camera, because the screen is so much bigger, you take full use of it. And if I turn the wheel a little bit, uh, what you'll see is that front marker will turn out further to guide you where the front of the car is going if you go in reverse. And if you go forward, it'll do the same thing. Now, what's nice is when you put this car in drive, it may not work while the car's not running, but if I put it in drive, it will show. Yeah, it will not go in drive for me, so that's fine. Um, the car has to be running, but if you put it in drive, you get the front view camera as well. So lots of benefits here. You can view straight down from the back if you wanted to. 
Um, I don't know why you would want to do that. You can view the regular backup camera, and then you can also view the sides. If you're parallel parking this car, you don't want to rub the sides against the curb, so you can see exactly on the side. And like I said, when you're moving forward, just the same as you had the backup camera here, you can have your front bumper. So when you're pulling up to a curb, a little bit lower front end of this car, you don't want to touch it. Uh, you can easily tap that button and see that uh, front uh, area there. So really nice there. Speaking of the louder exhaust, let's just talk about that really quickly. Louder exhaust uh, doesn't have a ton of pops or anything like that. It's just definitely a more robust feel to that uh, exhaust. Uh, sounds better. Uh, what I really enjoy about it is it makes going through the... Come on, camera. It makes going through the gears with the paddle shifters way, way more enjoyable because now you're hearing a proper sound out of this car that really should have come from it from the beginning. Uh, I think a lot of people kind of agree on that. It was fine, but it's just better now. And again, if you want, if you bought a Stinger in the past and you just like that it's quiet and calm... Uh, the exhaust can sound like that as well. You throw in sport mode, it gets noisy, um, but not really noisy. Um, and then you throw it in the regular mode and it's just regular. So I don't know if I showed you the steering wheel. I think I did. Uh, down here, I believe there was a gap down here before, and now there's no longer a gap. It's sort of filled out. D-cut steering wheel still, red leather, um, or red stitching on the leather. And of course it is heated and everything else. All right, real quick, we're about halfway through the content of this video. We still got a lot more to go. We're going to stay over time. Uh, it might have some pops and crackles. Somebody said, I wish it had pops and crackles. It might have some, but it's not an excessive amount. This is not a obnoxious car. It just sounds more robust. And I think that's probably the market, what they're going for with this car. Of course, you can put an aftermarket exhaust on this car. Uh, real quick, we have 76 people on live right now. We're going to have three, four, 500 people, maybe 600 plus people on. Uh, do me a favor, just hit that like button. It really helps us out. It tells us that you want to see these detailed things. Um, and that just, like I said, you guys know how YouTube works. It really helps us out a lot. All right, coming down here, automatic climate control buttons are the exact same as what they used to be. And what we'll do is we'll show you in the screen here what they look like. Uh, maybe, maybe not. I think I hit climate. Let's try it one more time doesn't like me there we go climate buttons there so you can kind of see the view of the dash there and what's kind of cool when you hit that climate button uh what you used to do with all of your settings um you had to go into the settings to turn on the um the auto dehumidify smart ventilation auto defog those kinds of things now what they do is they bring it right up there when you hit the climate button on the dash here so you can just customize everything right up right there uh, gives you a little bit of a view of the dash. Interesting graphics there, but again, more practical, better use, and again, a little bit better use of space uh, because you have more screen. Daniel Moon says, I'm late. Well, you didn't miss a whole lot. Just all the good stuff. All right, valet mode is a new mode in this car. I can't use that right now because Uvo Intelligence is not hooked up. It is connected to Uvo Intelligence, and I have to dig into that to give you a more accurate idea of what I understand it to be. Um, I won't even go into it because if I say something wrong now, somebody will give me a hard time. Uh, but valet mode is in this car that's new. HD radio data is something that people often looked over in the old car. I don't know if it'll work now that we're indoors, but we'll try. Um, yeah, there we go. So Doppler radar, as you can see, it's a beautiful blue sky out there. It doesn't look blue. Uh, it still doesn't look blue. It's blue sky, I promise. <laughs> Camera's making it look a little worse than it is. Uh, but you can see, not a cloud in the sky, or at least no, um, no real uh, precipitation in the sky. Somebody says, what's valet mode? Yeah, I got to look into that to see exactly what it does. So the thing with these videos, guys, is if I don't know exactly, I try to stay away from it. So um, I will do a video on that. It is connected to the UVO intelligence system. So I want to make sure that when I go over it, I give you all the details of it. Um, but it is part of the UVO intelligence system, so it has to be hooked up. And I can show that to you when we come back here. And we do valet mode. It's going to tell me it's not hooked up. you got to go to myuvo.ca, and we could do that. Um, but uh, not right now. Okay, when we do the radio, so we're now in line with the other cars here. This is our new radio look. Uh, you can see I'm inside, so I don't get satellite signal right now. But this is kind of the do-everything stereo. They took away some of the badging, which say things like HD radio, uh, Quantum Logic Sound, uh, Sirius XM. Uh, I don't see HD radio, but I'm almost positive it has it here. Probably just because I'm not on FM. So let's just go to FM for a second. There's FM. Yeah, there's the HD radio button right there. Let's turn the volume down. So again, radio looked like there. Can you go media? Uh, can you go to media? Yes, I can. So let's just do that. Uh, is there a media button here? Yeah, there we go. Sorry, I'm just looking through the camera as well. So media button, FM, Sirius XM, Bluetooth audio, USB music, sounds of nature, my least favorite feature, although we should probably examine it to see if there's anything different. Uh, AM, FM, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Let's talk about that real quickly. Uh, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are probably um, wired in this car. My guess is that a future software update will be wireless. Uh, I believe it's supposed to be wireless from the start, but a lot of these 10 and quarter inch screens do not have it. So let's just see what happens if we go to, um, phone projection. 
uh, connected phone that supports, yeah, using using an approved cable. So let me just say this. So yeah, so using approved cable. So here's the deal with wireless Android Auto on Apple CarPlay, guys. I haven't been told this, but I can almost guarantee you it's going to be wireless. All of these 10 and a quarter inch screens uh, in many of our cars, the, the K5, the Sorento, they're waiting for a software update. So these car, you can take it home today uh, and you will get future Android Auto and Apple CarPlay wirelessly in the future. Now, I haven't been told that specifically on the Stinger. I'll double check my specs just to make sure. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be uh, wireless, but at the start, these 10 quarter inch screens are not. Uh, probably by the time you buy this, it may already be there. Um, questions coming in. I promise I'll get to them in a second. Continue going on through here. Sounds of nature, just to make sure there's nothing new there because, you know, new cars, it's the same. Lively forest, calm sea waves, rainy day, open air cafe, warm fire press, snowy village. Um, snowy village is kind of a freaky one because uh, it makes this crunchy noises. Yeah, and then eventually a dog starts barking and kids start uh, laughing and something like that and it freaks me out because I feel like there's somebody in the car and it kind of throws me off. So we're going to go back to radio. Um, let's just, <laughs> where am I? Let's turn on the radio, make sure it's anything but. Um, where's the volume? There we go. Okay, we're on the fuzz. That's good. We're inside. That's why it's being fuzzy. Uh, outside lights are on the room turned off because we've been in here too long. Let's go back here for a second. We'll show you a couple little things in here. Let's go through a couple of the setup options and uh, the vehicle here. Um, lots of things going on here. So smart cruise control. This is all of your stuff. Driving convenience. There's a lot in there. Um, highway drive assist, uh, highway auto speed change. We covered that in a video previously about a week or so ago. Um, active sound design. This is where you guys talk about, um, I don't know if I hit some of these buttons. There we go. So this car makes fake engine noise on the inside. Almost every performance car does it. Why do they do that? There's two reasons. One, it makes it sound cooler inside. Two, these cars are sound deadened. So they take out certain frequencies of sound better than others. Um, so let, let's just assume it takes out the low rumbles better than the high pitch noises. So the exhaust won't sound correct. So what you can do is you can set it up to be strong, normal, soft, or off. It will enhance the exhaust system sound through the speakers. If you don't like it, turn it off. Most of us like it because, like I said, it makes it kind of standard. Um, a lot of cars do this, like the Mustang does it. A lot of performance cars do it. They just don't talk about it that much. What I like about it here is you can make it sound stronger, so you can sit in the car and you can really hear the engine noise, uh, with the exhaust noise, those kind of things. Um, but you can also turn it off. So it's kind of a nice feature. Uh, I left it on normal when I was driving it, and it sounded totally fine. Like I said, this Sport model does have added exhaust, which you can hear. But keep in mind, the sound deadening in these cars take out certain frequencies of sound better than other frequencies. So it basically changes the noise of the exhaust and this just sort of refills it out. Heads up display in here is excellent. I don't know if I can film it. Um, in the Stinger, it is a, at a perfect spot. It is in your peripheral vision when you're looking ahead. Uh, you have a little new icon on the back corner of the car, which tells you your blind spot detection. Blind spot detection is now collision avoidance assist. So if I steer towards someone uh, who's in my blind spot, I will, um, it will actually is capable of steering me away from that. One thing I will say about this um, heads up display with that blind spot detection, in the Stinger, the mirrors are a little bit more sideways in this car, where I feel like in some cars are more in front of you, they're a little bit more behind you. So you have to really turn your head to see the mirror and the heads up display, or sorry, the blind spot detection light. So I do recommend in this car, especially turning it on here because you will not start to signal if you see a little light on warning you. Oh, there we go. Heads up display is hard to film. So that's why I disappeared on there. I can still see it in person, but it just faded away there. So let's just come back. There we go. Uh, so the heads up display. Oh yeah. Like I said, guys, sorry about that. Uh, it's just the camera filming it. Uh, but that is something that I do recommend tur turning on. Let's just show you what we've got for heads of display. Uh, content selection, you can put a lot of stuff up there. Turn-by-turn -turn directions, traffic signs, driving convenience information, blind spot safety, radio and media information. And then you can also display the control. This is kind of a new control. You can move it up, down, rotate it around. Uh, kind of a new way of doing it. Brightness, it has a slider pin now, which is a little bit better. I like that uh, better. Uh, and then it can, you, just, you can just enable it here. So good stuff there. Um, active sound, the cluster, again, same thing in here in the cluster. Uh, there's a theme that doesn't change a whole lot. We'll show you that in a future video. Unless you guys want to see it now, you can tell me later. Content selection, same idea. Didn't come with the traffic signs on, uh, but a lot of this stuff you can put here. Blind spot view is a new thing. When I start the car up and I signal to the left, which I'll do right now, I am indoors, so I can't run it long. Signal to the left right here. There's my blind spot on the left side. There's my blind spot on the right side there. And that is a super, super good function here. So let me just turn the car off. Again, we are indoors with the door shut. So I got to just uh, 
make sure I'm not going to gas out the boss there. Uh, all right, so let's go back to the vehicle setting here, and we were in the heads of display. Nope, we were in the clusters, excuse me. Uh, I turned the welcome sound on just so you can hear some different things. Depends on what you want to do. You don't have to have it on. Climate is pretty cool here. Um, like I said, recirculate air, defrog and defrost options. The seat is also pretty good. So uh, seat easy access that can move the seat forward and back when you turn the car on and off. Uh, seat position change alert. Basically, if I start adjusting anything on the seat, it takes over the screen. Uh, if I turn that on, which I don't have it on. Let's do that there. So now I adjust the seat. You can see it tells you exactly what I'm doing with the seat. If I want to put that front section out, it tells the front section out or in. Uh, and the side bolsters, it can squeeze them in and out. So they're squeezing in towards me and out away from me right there. So that's kind of a cool thing. Um, again, if you're just fiddling with the designs, you don't feel the seat moving a whole lot, you can have that on. It tells you exactly what's going on. The lights, uh, you know, standard stuff, high beam, headlight delay, high beam assist, which is the automatic high beams. I want to show the ambient lighting. One thing I think they missed here is you can choose the brightness, which we can do. Uh, brightness is dimmed while driving, which I find interesting. The lights are off here, so we'll see if we can see it here. Um, there is ambient lighting up there, which you can see, and there is ambient lighting down here. So this metal uh, looking thing goes uh, red or whatever color you want. And when I say I want to show you something that I think they missed, dimmed while driving is kind of cool. Uh, you can dim it down a little bit. Um, one thing I think they kind of missed is the custom colors. If you look at the colors, orange, yellow, uh, refreshing sea, greenish, bluish, custom color. Uh, there's lots of colors here, but there's no red by default. So I had to go to the custom color. I had to set the custom color to red. So you can choose any color you want. It just, I thought it was interesting. There's no red by default because with all of this red inside, red stitching, red, um, red seat belts, that to me is a color that I think should be there. So I made it custom red here. But like you said, you can choose anything you want there. All right, guys, I'm gonna go outside the vehicle. There's plenty, plenty more to show you in here. Uh, actually, one more thing I'll show you. Then we'll go outside, we'll take your questions, we'll come right back in. Uh, the uh, wireless phone charging pad, I believe these are vents now. So that is, uh, my phone easily fits in there. Uh, plenty of space there. Still got a 12 volt port, which kind of surprised me, but I guess that's what we're doing. And um, ventilated heated seats, we'll show you a real no change here. Heated seats there, don't need them. And somebody asked, can you have ventilated seats with the suede seating? Well, here's the suede seating right there. You can see there is perforations in there and they move plenty of air through to keep you going there. Somebody said, yeah, we have 100 viewers. We do have 100 viewers. 100 viewers actually live right now, which means we're probably gonna have close to 1,000 over the course of this video. Do me a favor, guys. We were going for 70 likes. Let's see if we can get to 100 likes. If all of you hit the like button right now, it really helps us out. Uh, let's keep going back. We're gonna take your questions. Let's turn the card off. I'm gonna hop outside here again. There's probably a few questions in there. If there's not, you can ask them now and we'll keep going. All right, we'll show you the car. I'm gonna show outside trunk space. Uh, if anybody from my work is watching, I could use my teddy bear. I'm gonna take my jacket off here because I am sweating from sitting in a closed car. All right. This vehicle was very anticipated. Yeah, it was. That's why we got a lot of people on. All right, jacket's off. Let me just see your questions here. If there's anything I can find, uh, does the turn by turn on the HUD display Google map directions or factory nav only? I believe factory nav only, but that's a great question. I would be nice to see that. Um, feel like waiting for the Kia EV6 after the announcement today? Yeah, we're going to talk about the Kia EV6 tomorrow. I'm going to do a video on that tomorrow for sure. Uh, maybe we'll do a live, we'll see. Uh, valet mode is on the Telluride when it notifies you if the vehicle is driven past the perimeter. Okay, there we go. So that's uh, valet mode. I haven't played with it myself yet, so I'm always cautious to talk about it. Imagine having a car with Facebook. Okay, that'd be cool. Uh, sounds of nature, your least favorite feature. Yes, sounds of nature is my least favorite feature. Um, okay, I think we did everything there. Is there any other questions here? What is the Canadian MSRP? That's a really good question. Let's show you what we've got for Canadian MSRP. Now, Canadian MSRP is one of the um, better markets for this car price-wise. GT Limited, GT Elite, and GT Elite Suede Package. Really quickly, the GT Limited, guys, is not the same as the GT Limited from before. We talked about this before this car showed up. The GT Limited uh, loses some luxury features like the seat that I showed you, gains some technology features. So a 2022 GT Limited in Canada is not the same as a 2021 GT Limited. GT Limited, price-wise, starts at 50,495 MSRP. Then we move up to GT Elite, which is basically this car, 52,995. We add suede and the red seat belts, and 53,295. 300 bucks to get the suede and seat belts. Um, it's not everybody's cup of tea, but that's the best $300 you spent on this car. 300 bucks is a great deal for a really different interior. It's got that wow factor. People are gonna sit in this car and see that uh, suede interior and go, oh wow, this is a nice car for 300 bucks. I mean, you know, it's a couple tanks of gas. 
So uh, that's, to me, I do recommend the suede package. I realize a lot of you don't like suede. Some of you are concerned about cleaning the suede. I'm not, I just, I like it a lot. So uh, we'll go there. All right, we're gonna keep showing you the car. We're gonna show you rear seats next. We're gonna show you trunk space, uh, trunk as well. Not a whole lot of change there. We are gonna show you lighting. There's some uh, changes in there, obviously, that you guys have seen online. We're gonna go through that as well. If there's any questions that you guys have, uh, feel free to let me know the questions. Uh, we were setting our goal. We're at the 30 minute mark now. Usually we stop here. We were setting our goal at uh, 70 likes. We got to 74 right now. We got 100 plus people on. Can we get to 100 likes? We've never done that while we're live. So do me a favor, we'll do that. Let's keep going on. When will they release the Scorpion? The Scorpion model is not available in Canada. So the Scorpion model is a US only model um, and we don't have that here. So I don't have a whole lot of detail on when it's coming or anything like that. Uh, we'd have to talk to our friends in, uh, in the US and find that out. Are the turn signals, signals sequential? They are not. We're gonna show you all the lighting in just a second. First thing I'm gonna do, so just so you know where we're going, if you wanna stick around, I hope you do. Uh, rear seat, trunk space, lighting, and back to your questions. So we'll stick around to all, take all the questions. Is there a full digital gauge cluster? No, we just showed that, it's not. Um, but we'll go through. Okay, rear seat space in the Kia Stinger. Now this seat did move back a little bit. We, we showed that the comfort access was enabled. Uh, you can do things like turn on the rear heated seats. There are three levels of seat heaters in this car on the rear seats. Uh, you can turn those on from the dash. What I think that's a good feature is if you're driving to pick someone up in this car, you don't have to wait uh, until they get in for them to hit the button. You can turn the seat heaters on or down. And if you have a guest in your car and say, oh man, my seat's really getting warm or it's cold, you could turn that on or off from the dash as the driver or passenger on the digital screen, or they can do it right here from the button. Now, the other advantage of the suede, not as cold in the winter as well. Okay, we're gonna hop in here. I'm gonna show you me because I'm six feet tall. Do you fit in a sports car? Yeah, of course I do, easy. Hopping in here, easy to get in and out of. Keep in mind, the seat is further back than I would have it as um, if I was driving because it has that comfort access on. So you can see a little bit less room than I would uh, like, although that would be the full-size driver. That seat moves back a long ways. Uh, so someone taller than me, I'm six feet tall. I still have all the headroom I need. And this car is a wide car inside. So there's a lot of space in here. Um, you're not really gonna sit someone in the middle row here. Middle row, of course, because it's a rear-wheel drive car. Actually, it's an all-wheel drive car in Canada, but rear-wheel drive, you have a drivetrain coming through here. This is fairly raised up. It's, um, you know, a hand width down from the middle seat. So if you have a third person in here, um, in the rear seat, you're gonna basically going to put them in here to get them across town. You're not going to take regularly a third person in the back seat here. It's just not that comfortable. Uh, but again, headroom, legroom, and when you put the armrest down here, armrest has a little tab here that's... Uh, Stinger, we certainly don't have it in any, other, any of our other cars. Makes it a little easier. Armrest falls perfectly in line with where you would need it right there. So that's where you need it. Cup holders are in there. Bottle holders are in the door. Uh, let's show you the ports here. You've got vents right here that match the front. Now I say they match, they're actually a little bit different. They are a little bit smaller and they feel a little bit lighter weight, uh, but have a similar type feel. Maybe they're just the lighter weight is just because of that, but they have a positive feel to it. Very nice to the touch. This turns the vents on or off. So that's off there on right there and of course you can adjust the temperature there let the warm air through let the cold air through put it somewhere in the middle and each individual seat has their own individual vent and they can close that vent individually as well which is kind of nice 12 volt port again really surprised me to see a 12 volt port most of our cars at this point only have usb ports in the back here um, and then you have a 12 volt or usb port there so your rear guests can charge their devices and they also have the netted pockets here one thing i like and i i know some people will think this is a less expensive cheaper option this is plastic back here. The reason I think that's good is if you have kids in the back here, they're not gonna scratch your leather seats. They're just gonna get this dirty, this wipes clean with a damp cloth. I did that with my car on the weekend and it works great. And you have the netted pocket there as well. Taking a look at the doors here, just wanna show you really quickly. There's your tweeter right there, mid-range right there, full speaker right there. It's actually identical to the front seats. Tweeter up top, mid-range in the middle. I don't know if you can see, we'll zoom in a little bit mid-range in the middle there and a larger speaker there. So you have those speakers, uh, I believe, is it 12 or 14 speakers? There's one in the middle there. Somebody asked me earlier how many speakers and I don't remember off the top of my head. Lighting in the back is in the center, not out near the doors. It is that white LED lighting, which makes it look nice and rich. A little hook there to hang your stuff as well as in the handle, which is kind of cool. So if you have a suit or anything you want to hold, you can do that. Um, so ambient lighting in the rear. I don't see any ambient lighting in the rear. There wasn't in the previous generation, so I don't think so. I will point out the seatbelts here though while I'm here. 
Again, they're red as well, which is pretty cool. Shows up pretty nice in there. Um, again, very comfortable spot for a rear seat. 15 speaker, somebody said. That sounds exactly right to me. So uh, forgive me for not having that top of my head. Uh, we don't have a teddy bear with us. Normally we show the teddy bear in the trunk. Uh, nobody brought them, but we'll show you here anyways. Same trunk exactly as the um, as previous one. Now, a couple things with this trunk. I can open and close it with the key fob. Let's show you the key fob again right here. I can do that by holding that button there. I can hold on inside the dash, which will open the trunk. So I can sit in the driver's seat, hold open the trunk, it obviously power opens. Or I can use my smart key fob to walk up to the car. I don't have to wave my feet underneath the car or anything else. I just have to stand there. As long as I have the key fob on my smart trunk up so it will open, it will detect you and open on its own. Very cool feature. Look up smart trunk, smart tailgate on our YouTube channel. You'll see how that works. Down here, 60-40 split. You've got this panel which can be removed. You've got SUV style storage in your sports car. It's a big opening. You can fit large things in there. Not a crazy deep floor, but certainly big enough to take all of your luggage over here, underneath here, you do have the spare tire underneath there. A little bit of underfloor storage there as well. So uh, below that is also, I believe, the battery. There's a, used to be a battery in the car. You have the, oh, used to be, there. of course there used to be, there is still, but I believe it's in the trunk there, underneath there. You have tie downs there, which are nice uh, sort of chromed looking tie downs uh, on all sides. So you can put your cargo net, which comes with this car, to hold things down. So when you drive athletically, everything is held in place. All right, 36 minutes in, we still got 122 people live. 87 people have said, yeah, this video is worth a like. We're gonna do a short video and maybe you've already watched that. If you're not live with us, you may have already seen our short video just showing some of the differences. This is the longer form version. So if you have questions, now's the time to ask them if you're live with us. Uh, I'm gonna go back to there and back to take a look at what you have and uh, we'll continue to go through. If somebody wants to see under the hood, I'm totally willing to pop the hood for you. Uh, like I said, we're staying on long today because this is a desirable car and uh, we wanna go in detail with it. So let me just go back over here. There we go. Somebody says, smash leg button. Can you set the trunk lid height? Uh, short answer is I'm 99.9% .9 sure. I haven't tried it on this uh, two, 2022 model, uh, but I expect you can. Um, I just uh, haven't tried it. So you know what? Do you want to try it right now? Let's do it. Uh, let's open it up and I'll show you how to do it as well while we're here. These are the things we can do on live videos with your questions. So we just tap that. It opens up on its own. What I'm going to do is... I'm, so it's open up fully. I'm going to pull it down to a ridiculously low height, which is lower than we would want it. I'm going to hold this for three seconds. One, two, three. It beeped. And there is the new maximum height. So see how that's nowhere near as high as it was? Let's just uh, close the trunk down for a second. Whoops, come on. Remind me to fix this after the video. So we'll close the trunk down. You can see it close. We'll open it up here. It should go no higher than what we just had, which obviously was very high before. Boom, there you go. So if you've got a really low garage door, you can set it to whatever height you want. So there you go, 99% sure turns into 100% sure. Really like the new emblem, that's good. Yeah, so do I. A lot of people really like the new emblem. Can I change the old emblem to a new one? Uh, can you change the old emblem to a new one? Yes, I believe. We are expecting to have these uh, emblems on order and I'm hoping to do that. Do you think you can use the old key? Oh, somebody just asked a question. Let me just put you back there and I'll take a look at your questions. Current speed limit show up on the dash. Does the current speed limit show up on the dash? The dash is a manual gauge, so yeah, I'll show you the dash again in a second if you want. Uh, do you think you can use the old key? I really hate the new one. I don't think you can use the old key. New key looks like this, new logo, but yes, it's not quite as special as the other keys. It's back to the same as every other key we have now, which is interesting. So um, old key was a little different. Does it have enhanced lateral seat support in the convenience menu? My 2021 doesn't have it. Uh, enhanced lateral seat control in the menu. I'm not sure what that means. Oh yeah, does this have a sunglasses holder? So let's talk about sunglasses holder. First of all, let me show the trunk. Um, we did mention the sunglasses holder earlier in this video, so let's just go you through some of that. Um, advanced seat uh, controls in the cluster, I don't know if you have it, but you do have um, the side bolsters that are adjustable right here, right? So we talked about those before. You can bring them in or out like that. Um, just uh, bringing them in and out so they are Pinching, to, pinching together and going out in, with that control right there. Somebody asked about the sunglasses holder. Let's just cover that. It does appear like there is some technology in here now that wasn't there before. This does not come down. So I'm pretty sure that is a panel with some technology in there. We're gonna talk safety features in just a second on this car. A couple of the upgrades in this car. Uh, but now your sunglasses are gonna go in here in the armrest 
And that is the where you're going to put them right there. So you can put them in there or get yourself a nice case, put them down here. Uh, is it everybody's cup of tea? Maybe not. Um, but like I said, that's just the way it is. My job is to tell you exactly what's in the car. And uh, if you don't like it, I get it. Uh, Seltos doesn't have it up top anymore. Neither does Sorento. They've really moved it away from some of those things. So 105 likes, that's pretty cool. Does the sunroof go over your head? Yes. That's a great question because I'm a big fan of a lot of sedans. This is a ride. It's a good question. A lot of sedans, they kind of come back and the sunroof kind of starts here and goes backwards. This is going to feel convertible like when we open it. And in fact, why don't we just open it right now here? Oops, car's not on. Helps we do that. Uh, we'll turn that on here and we're going to open that up. Somebody said the other day they didn't realize that their sunroof tilted. It also tilts up, but now it tilts up and goes back. Uh, let's see if it stops and then goes further. I think it, that's all it goes. Yeah, so that's all it goes. But I am dead center pretty much at six feet tall underneath the open section. You get that real convertible feel to it. Guy like me with a bald head, uh, perfect for tanning my bald head. So uh, I like that quite a bit. Uh, we're going to take a look underneath the hood. I just saw a couple questions come in. Show under the hood. Yep, we'll do that right now. Um, let's do that. Oh, that's not the view anybody wants to have. Oh, car's still on. We should probably turn that off out. Who cares? Okay, so underneath the hood here, new Kia logo out front. We're gonna show you lighting as well. We haven't even shown you that yet. Safety, I wanna talk about that in a second. So we'll keep going here live and uh, we'll keep as many people as we can and we'll lose as many people as we lose. Uh, same thing under the hood, really no change at all. Same uh, engine cover here, uh, it says turbo that way because that's the way the drivetrain or, you know, that's where your uh, drive train goes or your, uh, you know what I'm talking about, your axles, not your axle, drive line. You know what I'm talking about. Can't speak when I'm live. Support's uh, still over here, so uh, you have to just uh, unscrew them to get to the air filters, which seems like it's a big pain, but it's actually not that hard to do. Um, so there we go. Okay, we're gonna just get rid of somebody over here, and I'll be right back with you. We've got a few people on every now and then are trying to make things difficult for us, so we're gonna get rid of them. Drive shaft, yeah. So uh, there we go. Just bear with me for a second here. We're gonna make sure some people um, go away from here. There we go. Sorry about that, guys. We've had a few trolls in lately. We're trying to get rid of them. So uh, safety features I want to talk about really quickly, and then we'll talk about lighting. Safety features, uh, of course, you have the forward collision avoidance, the forward lane follow assist. So it used to be looking for lane markers, and it would keep you centered in the lane with lane markers. Now it doesn't always need a lane marker. So if you're going down a country road, and there's no passenger side, um, let's say there's a, a ditch down here, side of the road, it can still find the lane marker. It can use vehicles in front of you, it can still make an artificial lane. Long story short, the car can steer for itself to keep you centered in the lane. It's one of the best systems in the auto industry. It's employed by Kia, Hyundai, Genesis, and it is fantastic. So the car is capable of steering itself, keeping itself centered in the lane. Uh, you also have uh, collision avoidance with that system. The collision avoidance can look for pedestrians and cyclists and also vehicles in front. So it uses the radar plate, which is hidden there, and the camera, which is up behind the mirror here. I don't know if you can see that camera with the reflection there. In that V there is a camera. So it's using that um, to find your uh, people in front of you or vehicles in front of you. The car is capable of stopping itself. Now, the big thing it does is it also has junction collision avoidance. So if you have the camera there looking forward and you're about to turn your car in front of me and I'm seeing the light turn yellow and I want to zip through. Well, if I decide to zip through and your car is turning in front of me, your car is capable of seeing me in this junction collision avoidance and it is capable of stopping itself uh, to um, keep you from... Um, colliding into me. So it's capable of stopping you from what is ending up being a quite dangerous collision. So it's a real insurance saver. It's a nice thing that way. And this car now has that, which it didn't in the past. Let's take a look at lighting. Lighting is going to be hard to film because LED lights don't show up great on a camera, but we're going to turn them on here and uh, we'll take a look. Now the headlights, I believe, can aim themselves. I'll have to double check that uh, later. Uh, just you know, trying to memorize everything for a live video, I just slipped my mind to double check on that. So what we've got out front here, they're gonna blink on your camera. They're not blinking in real life. This is what LED lights sometimes do on camera. So depending on how I hold the camera, depending on how the angle, depending on the brightness, everything else, uh, those are of course not blinking in real life to me. That's what you're gonna see on when the headlights are off. Those are your daytime running lights. Now, really sharp, really bright cut off, and both lights are actually on. I don't know if you can sort of see that inside light is also on. Um, so nice sharp cut off headlights. This is what you would come to expect from Kia's LED lights. They're very bright, very white, and a sharp cut off. Now in this camera, they tend to look a little bit yellowy. Uh, what about the high beams? I'll show you the high beams if you want. I don't know if it'll work great, but let's just take a look in here. So we'll take a look at the high beams. Yeah, so you can just sort of see them come on. They are LED as well. 
Uh, they look very yellowy greeny in the camera here, but they're not, of course, yellowy greeny in real life. Uh, let's just show you the signal lights as well, four-way flashers. Um, so this is just the way the camera films. Because they are so bright and white, the big difference with these white LED lights, and this is standard in the class now, is you're going to get that real daylight representation of color. So when you see an animal crossing the road, it looks like that animal to your eyes. It helps you see things better. Somebody says, I love the rims. We'll show you them up close in a second. There's your camera or your lights right there. Still basically the same LED headlights out front, LED signal lights out front there. Again, ignore that flickering. That's not happening in real life. Uh, those are instant on, instant off. The camera kind of kind of hide that. As we come over here, rear lights over here, same idea. Instant on, instant off. This is the new lighting. Now, it did flicker for me earlier. It does not flicker here. It looks pretty sharp. What I'm gonna do for you guys is I'm gonna set the camera down. Oh, I haven't got a chair. Let's see if I can set something higher up here. I don't know, I'm gonna have to sit it a little bit low, guys. You're not gonna see the top light if I do this, am I? Nope, let's just get a chair. Bear with me. I'm gonna run into my office here, steal my chair, and I'll be right with you. All right. Okay. Nice car. Yeah. So, all right, so we're just gonna steal this chair for a second so I can set this here. I will show you what the brake lights look like. That should be high enough to see it, right? All right. So we'll get the brake lights on so you can see what they look like. All right. The office door. Still good? Yep. There we go. Okay, hold on a second. So there you go. You can see the brake lights there a little bit. So there's that. All right, 163 people currently on. 117 likes, I've never done that before, I appreciate that. 165 people that are currently on. If you have a question, just ask it. We're gonna stay with you right now. If we have to stay on the full hour, uh, do, does an engine rev? Yeah, you wanna hear the sound of the engine. I mentioned that on top, the live video feed, the way I have to record with my phone, it really doesn't sound great. It would be misleading. So rather than pulling it out of the bay and just do an engine revving sound, we'll do a separate engine revving sound on this channel. Feel free to subscribe uh, and we'll do that when we've got a proper microphone on it. So let me just uh, skip to your questions here. Got a few of them on here that I'm missing. What's the max kilometers that a stinger on a stinger when picking up brand new? I mean, that depends, right? Like we take this car, I've taken this car out for a drive. It's still a brand new car. Uh, it's gonna depend on you. If you want one straight from the factory, you're gonna have anywhere between 12 and 30, 40 kilometers on that, depending on delivery, how it gets done. So feel free to you know, ask the dealer for that kind of thing. You might have to wait for that. Uh, these are going to have a few kilometers on them. This car I've driven myself. We had to you know, do the proper process of PDI, which is pre-delivery inspection. So that puts us some kilometers on it there. Any news on when the Carnival will arrive? I'm hoping next week, guys. No 2.5 turbo engine in Canada? No, that's right. I love this car. Can't wait to get mine. Yeah, so no 2.5 turbo in Canada. That's right. Can you put a roof rack on this? I think you could. Um, so keep in mind, one of the things with Kia and Hyundai as they own almost the ex complete package of steel plant from beginning to end. So you have more high strength steel in this car than many of its competitors. So even though you have a glass roof here, um, it would surprise me if you couldn't put a roof rack on here to take something like a kayak or something like that. So you have to do that. Uh, somebody asked a really great question. When is the Stinger gonna go fully electric? Okay, here's my prediction, guys. This is the last Kia Stinger. I don't know for sure. But we've just introduced an EV model worldwide this morning. It goes zero to 60 in about three and a half seconds. I don't know that they're going to come up with a second Stinger, a second generation of Stinger. We're going to have the EVs in a similar price point to this car, uh, a little bit more for that kind of level of performance. But if you want a Stinger, something that sounds great, and let me tell you guys, the drive of this car, when I drove the Kia K5 GT, drives great. Not a sports car. This is a true sports car. Um, so that is going to be probably the last generation. I mean, I could be wrong, but this is probably going to be the last generation of a car like this with that kind of performance. The reality is uh, to get performance now, cars are going EV and it's just different. It's different. So yeah, I hear you, Aiden Trites. We've already, uh, EV Stinger is not going to happen. So uh, 17 times, I will see it. Just let everybody ask once. If I miss it, I'll ask you to ask it again. Are you covering Genesis vehicles now too, or just Hyundai? Essentially just Hyundai and Kia. So starting tomorrow, um, 
basically April 1st, which I know is a terrible date to switch over, this channel will be covering Hyundai and Kia vehicles. We'll be doing both of those um, and covering both of those. So absolutely we'll do those. Genesis, we may pull a few in, but we don't have direct access to those. Kia K900 gets no love because we don't really have it here in Canada. So um, that's why we don't have love for it. We don't have, if it's not here, I can't show it to you. Package prices. Yeah, it's real simple. We showed prices earlier. Let's just show it again. Uh, no packages so much in Canada. Uh, here's the prices right here. GT Limited, $50,495. GT Elite, $52,995. Add the suede package, $53,295. That's it here. That's how it works. And that is a really good bargain when you consider the American models of similar price points, but of course we have a Canadian uh, dollar. So somebody says, this is a badass car. I love it. Yes, it is. It is really cool. All right. So if you've never driven a Kia Stinger, you have to drive one. If I've missed your question, please feel free to ask it now. What's the best lease deal you can do? That's a great question. Uh, if you're interested in buying, if you're anywhere in Ontario, give us a call. Just uh, give us a call, 519-304-6542. Go to our website. Uh, reach out to us. We are a leading Kia Stinger dealer. We would happy, help, happy to help you out. Uh, we put these videos out there to earn your business, so feel free to do that. Um, like I said, if there's a question I missed, let's answer that. Otherwise, we'll wrap it up. Uh, are there any plans for a Kia super performance car in the future? Maybe. Um, it would be electric, but maybe that could be. Uh, I think, guys, we've covered everything we can. Uh, like I said, I'll do a shorter video here so we can introduce this video. Um, somebody asked if I'm covering Genesis vehicles too or just uh, Hyundai. No, I'm going to do Hyundai and Kia. Maybe mix the odd Genesis one in, but it's really going to be Hyundai and Kia. Is USA allowed to buy from Canada? You're not. It's against our franchise agreement. We can't sell to you, unfortunately. Any prediction on when they will be available in the US? Uh, ours is here in Canada, so yours should be there in the States anytime. What year is this one? This is a 2022. So that's a 2022 model year um, uh, car. So that's how it's called here. Sometimes in the rest of the world, it's called 2021. Can you guys get the quilted diamond seats in Canada? We cannot, but we do have this suede package, which I'm not sure that you guys get there. So I think... That's where we're going to wrap it up, guys. It's been fun. we got 128 likes. Never done that before. Uh, the 152 people that are on right now, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. I promise you no one will cover Kia and Hyundai vehicles more in-depth than us. We do this literally every weekday. Uh, usually we only go for about a half an hour. I will show you any car. I will pull this car back in here for you if you want. Uh, we can do that all for you. So do me a favor, guys. Hit that subscribe button. We're way over time, but that's okay. It was worth it hanging out with you guys today. Uh, so like I said, we'll be back here tomorrow doing the same kind of thing. We're going to include Kia and Hyundai vehicles starting April 1st. Terrible day to switch over to something new, but that's what we're going to do. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Have a great day. We will talk to you again soon.